Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to read poems that are all something to do with travel. That seemed an idea to, to theme it a bit. This one starts off in Sicily. It's called <coughs> Breakfast Palermo. <coughs> one golden glazed bun sliced open. One scoop of custody ice cream speckled with chips of fruit and chocolate. Sandwich them lavishly. To be eaten in uniform by a young soldier with one careless hand, espresso in the other. At the chrome bar, more coffee is hissing. Sunshine slants in, early, yellow. Not a speck on his trousers. Uh, this one is a kind of request from Anne-Marie, if you like. Um, I know she likes this poem. Um, it's called The Fire Yard. <clears throat> At the back, the last room, lucky to get it. The whole hotel smells of damp curry. Facilities not special. I settled down with the old TV showing Winter Olympics. Two rival skaters perform their separate circles, but I shift across to the local Chinese stations. Men in suits, all the same shade of grey, seems to be the Taiwanese parliament. The spy hole lens in the door is fitted the wrong way round. Hmm? There's a label in my new underpants, inspected by Carol. <coughs> I stick it over. <laughs> Through the Venetian blinds outside, I spy the fire station yard, the men idly shooting hoops, playing a hose on a car. How many visitors must bless this pent-up exercise? San Francisco in its own bored heat, ready for flame. This is another one um, in America. Um, I was um, with my friend Phil, who was my host, um, who was driving me across Wisconsin. Um, and uh, there's a picture that goes with this. In fact, there's a whole postcard. I have several copies of this, if you're interested, as well as the book, of course. Um, and the poem is called Dull Funeral Home, which is what it says on the sign. Dull funeral home. A little past a car wash, on your left, a statue of a Holstein cow. On your right, hey, can we stop the car a minute? It's that sign. And whenever you need it, they have time. Visit for a drink with the embalmer. Take as long as you like. Their expertise is at your disposal. Death needn't be a time to do anything. If you want fuss, that's down to you. This is America's dairy land. They put trust in cows here. They know your dead meat turns out as lively as your recipe. Follow the standard procedures for your denomination. Hire the Fort Snelling Memorial Chapel, staff available for weddings and other pastoral acts. New Age ritual consultancies advertise planned observance for solemn or festive occasions, parenting, competitive events, establishing traditions, anniversaries, pet loss, whatever. But if anything happens, ask for the dull funeral home. They don't need ideas. <laughs> and this is another American one. Um, this was when I was in New York visiting my friend, the poet, the late Carl Morse, um, who died in 2006, I think it was, of, um, oh dear, I can never remember what it's called, um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you later. Um, but we were all rather more worried about something else. This was 1992. It's called Wall Street. 
We walk further downtown beyond the village graffiti that says, AIDS is thrush and it's curable. Life is money and the buildings are bigger here. It's Ash Wednesday. This is a day to commemorate some crisis. All the last born maybe, picked from among the perfect suits, the ones wearing on their groomed brows a smudge like a smear of sex. Look how ready they are. It makes them hunger for six weeks without sin. Being with my sacrilegious Manhattan friend, it's time to look at a few spiky old churches, because we don't visit here often. Remarkable needlework, the white altar cloth with crossed pairs of three-tailed scourges in red. More smudges, gladly humble to wear this dirt mark in public. And Jesus, with his robes hanging off him, stands at a bank of candles warming his hands. I remembered now, it's myasthenia gravis. That's what he died with. Um, my father's family were Jews who came from various bits around the Russia, Poland, Lithuania borders. And some of them ended up in Edinburgh and some of them ended up in London. Um, and this is called St. Catherine's Dock. In clear brown water, you can make out fish clustering in groups, four or five abreast. A sky full of helicopters, and behind them, airliners. They bring importance, trade, prosperity. Sacks and planks on the wharf side, loaded and unloaded, smoke and tar flattening the breeze. The docks refurbished with cafes and shops, Cocktail dresses, flowers, marzipan, porcelain. 300 yards from here, my great-grandmother lived in a tenement a step from the poorhouse. Rusty freighters from the Baltic or the Black Sea. Businessmen for lunch from Paris and Brussels. Refugees from pogroms ate to a room. Little black fishes gathering round the pier. And this is another kind of Eastern Europe poem. For a while I was calling myself Luchinsky, which was my great-grandfather's name before he changed it to Daniels, but for various reasons I'm back to being Daniels. So Mr. Luchinsky is sort of floating off back east. Um, in fact, he's not really floating, he's on a tram. Mr. Luchinsky takes a tram. He has paid a small coin to a glass box like a fairground machine. A dull purple ticket permits him to sway with the tram, which pushes on through a city of breeze blocks and neo-baroque stucco. The people might be his second cousins twice removed, a woman in fishmonger's gloves coming home from the market, a man balancing two dusty old bikes between fellow passengers. In this incarnation, his tweed suit is not quite threadbare enough. He hasn't lost his sense of direction, but it has nowhere to take him. Somewhere at the end of this line is a field of dandelions and a bluebell. And the last poem I'm going to read is a translation from Vladislav Kratosevich, who I've been working on. Uh, he was uh, a Russian poet, except he, his family were really Polish. He'd um, been born in Russia and grew up there. Um, but this was written in early 1917, at a time when he was doing a lot of translation from Polish. And it has an epigraph from a Polish poet called Krasinski. Uh, the poem is called Gold. Go, now we place gold in your mouth and we place poppy and honey in your hands. Salve eternum. A gold coin in the mouth, hands full of poppy and honey. These are the final gifts of your earthly business. And don't let them incinerate me like a Roman 
I want to taste my sleep in the womb of the earth. I want to rise again as the spring corn, circle the ancient track that the stars follow. In the darkening grave, poppy and honey will rot. The dead man's mouth will swallow the gold coin. But after many, many years of darkness, a stranger will come and dig my skeleton up. And inside the blackening skull that his spade smashes, the heavy coin will clang, and the gold will flash in the midst of bones, a tiny sun, the imprint of my soul.